who they are. We are very clear of this group of people. The indictment is on countries such as Australia, America, the United, the EU, the international organisations like the World Bank and the IMF that continue to legitimise this regime who are nothing but corrupt criminals, worse than mobsters. That's the only way I can describe it. You got some pretty incredible access. How did you pull that off? <laughs> How do you pull off anything? It's people who know people who know people who just, you know, force the door open for you and that's all it was. I mean, I was very lucky to um, have people who... Um, were friends with people and they just kept knocking on doors and it took us 18 months to get the interview with Prime Minister Hariri, similar amount with the Hezbollah minister, it was the first interview they'd given to a Western journalist in 12 years, Hezbollah. Um, many, like the pr President Aon didn't get there even though he tried like 50 times every avenue. Um, others like Gibran Basile, I got one interview and then I doorstopped him here when he was in Australia for a second interview. But, you know, the three key characters we've got, you know, the President, uh, Michelle Aoun, Nabi Biri, the Speaker of the House, the Silver Fox, he's the most dangerous man, one of the most dangerous men in, in Lebanon, and Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, and Walid Jumblot. Now, those ones I didn't get to face, and those ones I tried many ways, even with Jumblot's wife. Uh, we met her with people and their family, so many ways. But, you know, I, I just say, why? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you sit down with me when others have sat down with me if you're innocent? If you have nothing and you have no fear, why wouldn't you sit down and talk about your own country? Well, you put the question to people that you interviewed, what is your dream for Lebanon? So I want to put that to you now. Mm -hmm. What is your dream for Lebanon? Is this something that can be fixed with the elections next year or is it something that is going to take decades to return this incredible, beautiful city of Beirut to what it once was? My dream for Lebanon has changed. It used to be a beautiful dream. My only dream right now is that we all engage in the election process, that we're allowed to have free and fair elections next year in Lebanon and that the diaspora, those in Australia, around the world who want to vote, have the right for free and fair elections. Because as I said to our Australian ambassador who hosted us in Beirut for a screening in October very generously, in front of the American ambassador, the UK ambassador and 20 others, all we ask for is free and fair elections. Because if, the, we, if, if we, the Lebanese people of Lebanon and those brothers and sisters and families around the world that still believe in Lebanon have the right to have our voices heard and counted fairly, if the outcome is bad, then it is on us, not on anyone else. So all we're asking for is free and fair elections. And I call on Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Maurice Payne, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, to allow and enforce that and, and impose that. We have the right, we have the will, Australia has influence, it has power, as do every other uh, global power in the world, to demand it because we are funding this criminal regime. Australian taxpayer money is going to these countries in aid or whatever, and we as Australian taxpayers demand that our money goes to free and fair elections. Daisy Gedeon, the film's out in cinemas today. Great to talk to you this morning. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Come and see us in Melbourne, Brisbane, wherever you like. We're out tonight. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, let's get to federal politics now. The Prime Minister has announced.